Turn up, players. This week on Thug Notes, we kicking it in the beast mode with Beowulf by... It's all good up in the land of the Danes where righteous King Rothgard them built a mead hall for his army so they can get white boy wasted on the reg. Them players raging so hard that they disturb a stank beast named Grendel who start rolling up to the mead hall every night to lay a whoop on them Danes. Grendel beef with them boys for years till one day Beowulf, the baddest motherfucker in the whole world, rolls up to the king and say that not only is he gonna waste Grendel, but he gonna show out and do it unarmed. Rothgar gets all geeked up about Beowulf's arrival and goes balls out to celebrate. When Grendel finally busts in and starts scrapping with Beowulf, that scrub ain't no match for Woofy, who straight rips his arm off. Then Grendel cowers back to a spot where he bleeds out like a little old bitch. Rothgar gives big ups to Beowulf for ice and Grendel. But the party gotta stop short when Grendel's mama gets all crunk about her son's death and starts jacking shit up in the mead hall. So Wolfie and his boys strap up and head to her underwater crib where Beowulf straight murks this beezy. Now that the Danes be rid of all their monsters, Beowulf rolls back home to Geatland where he shares his bling with the King Hegelak and Queen Heegd. Later, Hegelak and his son get shanked in a war. So Beowulf inherits the throne. After years of rocking a crown like a boss, old man Beowulf hears some bad news. His pad got smoked by a dragon. See, some wank ass fool boosted a goblet from the fat stash of that dragon, and when he realizes somebody been ganking his ice, he started going ham all up in Geatland. Even though he an old geezer now, Beowulf gathers his posse and steps up to buck that dragon. With the help of his boy Wheelof, Beowulf gats that scaly scrub but not before getting bitten by his poisonous fangs. In the end, Beowulf goes belly up from that poison. So my boys build a decked out funeral pyre and send them off with a bunch of the shiniest bling in the land. So even though the Geats lost a badass king, he done left them with a swole fortune. And in a culture of tit for tat, the king is swinging a big when he's bankrolling his peeps. Cause if your pants ain't bulging with the Benjamins, your people ain't gonna show you no love. Like that hater King Haramold, it don't matter how much power God giving you. If you don't cough up that cash, you only gonna bring ruin to your people. Let this marinate, son. When it comes to laying the Anglo-Saxon poetry game, you can bet that the character names be loaded with mad meaning. So let me tell it like it is. Homie's always debating about the meaning of Beowulf's name, but the tightest translation is man, wolf rapping my boy's human and beastly qualities. Cause sometimes Beowulf acting chill, but other times he coming out so hard that he's just as monstrous as all those beasties he beefing with. Like that Uberman Nietzsche saying in Beyond Good and Evil, whoever fights monsters should see to it that in the process he does not become a monster. And when you look long into an abyss, the abyss also looks into you. But Beowulf's beef with those monsters just don't stop at all the slanging and banging. The realest danger is becoming a gnarly beast just like them. Cause on the real, Wolfie's rampaging is just his out of control pride attempting to solve the violence of the world with mo violence. Even when Wolfie steps up to Grendel, his head get way too big when he gotta show out and wreck Grendel without his chrome. Although Rothgar tells him not to give in to pride, Beowulf don't listen. Cause it's that pride that keeps Beowulf from gathering a posse to bust a cap in that dragon. And it's exactly this that leads him to the greatest monster of all. One that's so bad, no baller can touch it no matter how righteous he thugging. Death. Yo, thanks for watching Thug Notes. Subscribe, you heard?